There are people here that this is exactly what will happen to you. There's the form your instructions used to come in before. There's a way you used to receive it where it will come with plenty, elaborate. I'm telling you now, this shift that is happening, that is bringing this good wine, you may not receive your instructions in this nice, gentle, soft, you know, package like it used to be. to have a bit of a short uh, teaching today um, and we're going to be staying on the theme of the word that we have for this month um, so please just stay connected I know I've been able to touch on it here and there like during the prayers but um, we're just going to go in a little bit more um, to prepare many of us for what is coming um, you know in this new month one of the things that I've realized is that if we don't you know build proper understanding then we just have a group of people who are so excited to to confess a word and claim a word and like you know they don't understand like what it means for them what their responsibility is so that's why I want to spend time you know just talking um, about it so uh, for those of you who are able to log on YouTube please indicate your presence on YouTube if you can I just like for a couple of people to indicate that they're there it does a few things for us one it helps me do my sound check it helps me know that everything is working fine um, but secondly it also helps with the activity on YouTube and so when YouTube sees that there's activity going on and they're like okay this this looks like it's something that people are interested in and then they share it with more people right um, I think is the little bits that we can do um, thank you so much Oluchi um, our bride so yeah, I think it's a little bit we can do in like ensuring that people are hearing the word of God, right? There's already so much mess on the internet. And if we can do a little bit to, uh, how do I say, spam the internet, but this is not even spam. This is the good news to basically flood the internet. Yeah, let me use that word, flood the internet with um, the good news. Then I think we've done uh, a good bit of evangelism, right? So when you get on YouTube, as the teaching is going on, feel free to leave comments. Feel free to just, you know, just interact in there. It's good to log on, but it's also good to have those interactions. It helps with, you know, the video being put in front of more people. And you never know who needs to hear the word that's uh, being shared that particular day um, based on where they are. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just pray and open the meeting. But like, so there was some, one of us here, you know, maybe we'll uh, let her come share, you know, her, her testimony and all of that. But um, when we had that uh, series that we did on, birthing your prophetic destiny i think she had missed like maybe a couple or maybe even more than a couple of the series um she is part of uh, the king's are but you know she's been just really busy with life and other things and then one specific day she was able to log in and um she, she was i don't know just truly blessed by the message and not only did she leave there blessed like okay now i know this and that but like she went on and you know began to walk in the reality of that and then she sent me a message uh shortly uh, a short while ago and she was telling me about you know something that god had then put on her heart for teenage girls and how she's working on you know the first installment the first you know um would i say event um in in that way and i just i'm so grateful to god for that because that's the end of you know what we do here it's not just so we come here and hear stuff but so that we're able to go back out there and impact the world and um those people around us so she's going to be having that first uh, uh, program with the teenage girls um, and I'm sure it's going to be a huge blessing to them. There's definitely the need to reach them um, in certain areas of their lives here in America, okay? Like, it's very necessary. Like, you people don't realize that <laughs> in Nigeria, lucky there's programs here, there, everywhere, but like, in America, like, something like what she's doing, it's just so important, so I'm so, I'm so thankful. Um, there are others of us, but, you know, I feel like people will share what the Lord has asked them to do at the right time and they will share with the house. I just, I don't want to share people's uh, stuff if they haven't given me the permission to do that. But anyway, um, I wanted to just um, share that and I encourage everyone, don't come in here thinking you're just coming here to listen because, you know, Madam Amy is, you know, no, you're coming here and it's sometimes just a time to refresh something is it just it serves as a time to pull something to the surface that's like maybe swarming somewhere you know in the middle in your spirit somewhere in there and it just brings it to the surface and boom you just get up and you go do right and that's what gives us joy here when we hear about the things that you're doing the impact that you're making out there and don't think that impact is it has to be like this big thing you know i was speaking with um uh, a family friend of us who's also a minister and we're talking about something and you know he's like oh trying to put something together and he's thinking oh you know it's not going to be this is not, you know we don't have you know it's not going to be many people so it's not like a big and i'm like it no like it, it doesn't have to be 
that if you sit down and you impact six people if you sit down and you impact 10 people you have done a good job like you have you have done your bit um I was also listening to this uh, man of God who I have, you know, quite some respect for. And he was talking about part of why he doesn't necessarily have the interest to like, you know, his goal is not to run a mega church. Yes, they have a big ministry, but the way that he runs it, he's very intent that like he doesn't, that's not his plan. Like it's when they write, you know, because, you know, people can write goals and it's like, oh, this is the next phase and all of that. And he's like, no, it's like the only time he would be interested in putting something like that together is if he can have a system where he has maybe a pastor not just some random person that says i have you know a, a degree in theology but like a pastor that he knows that he has discipled in charge of like groups of 10 people because it's important that people are reaching other people out there we don't want people to get lost in a big group so that little thing that's on your heart that you're thinking ah, only five people will come why do you think you need more than five people right like don't hesitate don't question what you know god is asking you to do don't think it has don't don't let the world give a definition to it okay um you might see people who think that ah, is it this small thing that mm, yes it, it is big in god's eye okay so i just want to share that encouragement i don't know why i felt the need to say that but i feel that there are some of us here who there are things that the lord has started brewing in our hearts the lord has started brewing them in our minds and maybe we're questioning like oh am i the right person or oh there's nobody who's gonna come like oh i don't know this many people or oh will people even come why do you care about like if it's 50 million people or five people or whatever like if god asks you to do something then you just do it that's all it is right um so that's an encouragement for someone so i want to hear about these things you know share them with me please don't think that's like we're calling you here so that you can sit here and like all you know just support what one person is doing no when you have something that you're doing we want to hear in the house so that we too can find out how to support you whether it's by being there to you know be present with you whether it's financially whether it's brainstorming whatever it is we 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 want to be with you you know um through that journey and be a blessing to you okay so that said, let's go into the teaching for today. Father, I thank you for this time of fellowship. I thank you for this privilege to speak to your people. Lord, I thank you because we have all come here today to be watered by you. We have all come here today to hear from you. Lord, I ask that even as the word comes forth, that you speak expressly to your people. I ask, Lord, that you help me to decrease, decrease, decrease completely so that you might increase even in this message, even in this time, even on this platform in the name of Jesus. I ask that you speak to the hearts of everyone here. I ask that the word that belongs to everyone reaches them even as you have intended in the name of Jesus. Let there be no interruptions. Let there be no interference. Let it come out purely. Let it come out complete and let it come out with clarity in the name of Jesus. For everyone here who's seeking an answer, who's asking a question in their heart, maybe it's a question they're conscious of. Maybe it's a question that's just in their subconscious. Lord, I ask that you bring answers, bring answers to the hearts of your people. And let us live here blessed. Let us live here transformed. Let us be different. And let it be clear that we have met with you. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so we're going to take some time today. And we're just going to go through um, what I think will be a short teaching. For those of us who have been part of the prayers that we've been taking um, from the beginning of the month. Yeah, this is uh, the second day and then tomorrow is the third day. For those of us who have been part of those prayers, um, the, the topic is not going to be um, a strange one to you. And so you already know that our focus this month is on the good wine, right? So we've been taking prayers along those lines and, you know, also here and there we've been able to, you know, just sort of share a charge based on what God has put on um in the heart of you know uh whoever is leading that's myself and then damala will do his um tomorrow and then madame lola and then everybody else who's led prayers right so today we're going to just go into it a little bit more because i feel that this isn't just something that we're to do as just um you know taking prayers i feel that there's a need to kind of furnish understanding so that we're very prepared for um what's ahead of us now when the lord showed me this that this month is going to be the uh month of the good one i let me just not tell you guys because i was like hmm. literally what it was was that i had this vision of the night and it's i literally had um wine being poured out being served 
and I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Now, when I woke up, I, I hadn't even yet put it together, but I realized that in the few days before that, the Lord had been speaking to me about wine skin, wine skin, wine skin, and I'd just been writing and scribbling stuff here and there because he had been impressing upon me the wine skin, the wine skin, the wine skin, and then. Um, after that window that's when i saw that vision of the wine being poured out and, and i'm like i honestly didn't even think much about it i'm like what kind of a random thing is this and then um the holy spirit you know brought it uh to to a, to, to the center for me and um that is how we are here um in the book of john chapter 2 and verse 10 is our key scripture but i'm going to just read through and share a few things that the lord you know puts on my heart just to ensure that we're ready and we're prepared for this season I've read it a few times, but you know what the Bible says, right? To repeat the same things to you, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually for your own good, right? So it says here, uh, John 2 from verse 1, it says, And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, well, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins um, apiece. And then Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the wine that was made, the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. And so when this word came to, um, to me that, you know, this month, that's what we're centered on, is that there is going to be the release, the outpouring of the good wine this is that season where we all get to enjoy we all get to partake of that good wine so there are some other translations that you see that actually describe it as the best wine so that is that prior to now it's not that you haven't had something it's not that you haven't tasted wine but prior to now you've enjoyed some type of wine you've enjoyed some form of something but in this season we're stepping into the good wine and listen for many of us, we might hear a word like this and hear, oh, what wonderful, thank you. Now, I don't know where you are in life, but I know where the Lord has been dealing with me from. And I also understand something, that many times what happens is that because of the responsibility of teaching um, and leading this uh, group of amazing, powerful women, many times the Lord will bring me into the experience of what he's working on with the group so that I can speak from that perspective, okay? Now, it's possible for me to get into the Bible and put something together and teach. And you know that, right? Because if we're given a theme and somebody just says, oh, come here, maybe you weren't planning to, and you just go somewhere and they're like, oh, come speak about this and that. Like, you'd have to do it. You'd get up and do it. But the difference between just teaching and teaching prophetically is that you're not just teaching to educate the minds of people, but you're teaching to bring people into the understanding of the current emphasis of God. That's the difference between teaching us like okay i'm just educating and the um yeah teaching that way and teaching prophetically prophetic teaching is that yes you're bringing a teaching but what you're doing is that you're trying to bring people into the center of what the emphasis is on god's heart so i talked about how we went through the the teaching um on birthing your prophetic destiny and we went through that for quite some weeks and at the end of it there's been at least two if I've missed somebody, you know, I apologize, but that I can think of the top of my head, there have been at least two people. Is it two? Anyway, there have been at least two people who've come to share, you know, what it is that got birthed in them um, and what they're about to start. 
So this is not something where like, oh, I just have a dream. Oh, you know, I just, you know, have like this, you know, vision in my head. No, it's no longer a vision in the head. It's now on paper. It's now having legs. It's now moving. Okay. So that is the benefit of sitting in such um, an environment on that, on that, that kind of teaching, because it's not teaching to show prowess and, and skill in just like, Oh, I can connect this Hebrew and that Greek and all of that. No, it's that God has an emphasis. So I could come here and just, I could rather just say, and thus say the Lord, blah, 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 till the end. But it's not going to benefit you that much, except I then go into this aspect where I'm not just teaching, but coming at it from that prophetic perspective of this is the current emphasis um, that is on God's heart. So I don't know what it is for a lot of people and I don't know where you are and what this means for you. But when I sat there and I read the whole thing, when I tell you that this thing first ministered to me before I even came together, uh, uh, came, you know, in front of uh, you all and, you know, starting to look at it together in prayers, it ministered to me first. Because it said here specifically, it says, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And then when people have well drunk, that's when you bring out something that's like, okay. Because that's the way of the world. That's the world system. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's such a strong anointing on the altar today. There's such a strong, listen, I can't feel it. It's so palpable. Oh, 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 oh. So that is the way of the world. That is the way of the system. Like, okay, let us, you know how they tell you in the world, oh, you know, f- first impressions, you know, um, are most important. And so you put your back into that first impression. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Oh, man, de brake san de legado, she kamba legado, se leve kin de liado, shatai. Misko brando valakan de balanina kaza zante brege de gemente lebedo si akunda la bade shatai. There are some of us on the altar today that we are literally clinging onto this word because it means everything. It means everything. It's literally a make or break moment in your life. And you are clinging onto this word because it has to come to pass for you. And I can feel quite some virtue flowing on the altar this morning. Because as many as are here and are indeed in need of this last minute, this last hour, miracle intervention from the Lord, I can feel that virtue flowing even right now. That that thing that you are trusting for, you will receive it before this year comes to pass. You had already concluded in your heart that there is no way. I've been saying this thing, but I mean it. There are some of us who had shifted things to next year because it just didn't seem possible anymore. But I'm telling you so strongly, so strongly, that this is not just teaching um, for education or something. It is a prophetic teaching. So it's one, bringing you into the mind of God, but bringing you into the reality of the oppression of the Spirit. Bringing you into the reality of what the Spirit of God is doing. So I I ask that you please stay connected here. Don't sit here and think, oh, I've heard the scripture, I've read it 10,000 times. That's not what this is. I'm not here to tell you and teach you like, oh, because you've never seen this in the scripture. No, I'm here to communicate God's heart to you. Okay? So it said, at the beginning, these people set forth a good wine. Then you wait till the end for that, you know, which is worse. And that is the system of the world. If you sit down with anybody, if you sit down with people and start talking, these are some of the things that you hear. Oh, they tell you, you have to put your best foot forward. They tell you first impressions, you know? So ideally that's where you want, or you expect that the bulk of the effort is. That's where you would expect that you would see maybe the biggest, you know, or the best that a person has to offer. But this situation that we're seeing here is pretty much how things work in the kingdom is how Jesus sees things playing out for you. That yes, there may have been a reality. There may have been something that you enjoyed. There may have been something that you partook of in the beginning of the year. But as we are coming into the close of the year, God is bringing many of us into a different season. Now, let me bring it home a little bit and get a little more personal um, for, my own, uh, for my own self. So I know what this year started out like for me. And I know what this year has been like for me. And I know that there was a time 
a window where something, a major shift, shift happened. And Damala had spoken to me because God had spoken to him and told him like, there is a time frame, there is a window um, of observation, there is a window that has to pass, okay, before, you know, X, Y, Z, um, becomes clear or before you know more inf- insights more information is given but I, I you know i was just all in my own head and not really because i wasn't even thinking about it and i'm like who's gonna sit here and wait for this window that you say has to elapse before you know i'm not gonna be sitting here counting the time right but it so happened that the completion of that window coincided with this new month's theme and when I sat down and I thought on it, and when I sat down and I looked at what God was saying to me, oh, it just reminded me that God is truly faithful. I want to say to someone here who may have had what you would consider to be a rough year. I want to say to someone here who may have had what you consider to be the unexpected, what you didn't plan for, what you weren't ready for. Maybe something that you thought it was in your wildest dreams, this thing would happen, not in a good way. Okay. And then it did happen. And you started to feel confused, like, okay, what am I to do with this? Where am I to go from here? I'm trying to tell you this, that a shift has happened. You may not know it now. You may not know it in its entirety, but I'm giving you this word that a shift has happened. And this is not because you are fully aware or you acknowledge, whether you know it or not, that's my assignment here for someone today. Because you've been seen, sitting down trying to make sense of the happenings around you. And that's my assignment here to help you understand that a shift has happened. A shift has happened. And it will happen for some of us in one area. For some of us, it can feel like your whole life <laughs> is what's going through this shift. For some other people, it's like there's an area where you had been waiting and waiting on God for, and it's in that specific area that shift is happening. And then for some of us, you are even taking on our is the area of your life where you actually thought you knew what you were doing, where you actually thought that you had everything properly laid out. You had everything in order. It is in that particular area that God is now choosing to bring that shift. But it's a good shift. It's a good shift. It may not feel like it's in the midst of it. It may not feel like it when it feels like things are upturned, but it is a good shift. So I want to just share some perspective. And I think part of what I'm the the main thing I want to do today is just to help us understand, um, how to be properly positioned, right. To partake of something like this. So when you hear that the good wine is being poured out, the question is how do I position my, my vessel to ensure that I'm receiving of this good wine to ensure that I am full to overflowing with this good wine. There are a few things to, uh, to keep in mind. And the first thing I want to point out, I've written a few things here and I'll be cutting in and out. You know, I'm trying to follow like a particular agenda and then the Holy Spirit is putting some things in my mind. But anyway, so a few things, if someone, you know, uh, enjoys taking notes or putting numbers to things, you know, this is the first one. Because when a shift like that is occurring, many times there are people who will resist it. They may not do it intentionally. They may not do it on purpose, but there's a reflex reaction to push back against it. But when something like that happens, there are certain people who will make the best, who will make the most of such a season. And the first thing to keep in mind is that your ability to partake of this good wine is going to be very dependent on your ability and willingness to follow instructions instructions when they come to us from God many times they won't make sense but one thing my father and the Lord would say and that's truly shifted my mind and helped me to learn to be more yielded is that we do not live by God's explanations we live by his instructions so your ability to partake of the good wine It's not going to be based on if you get sufficient explanation. So I say that because if you are the kind of person who typically needs explanations, you need things to be spelled out, you need things, you know, it's like make it make sense, right? You're that sort of person. You are going to need to make some adjustment. Because the way that you partake of this good wine is that you follow instructions. So verse 5 says here, 
It says, His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And that's really what, what it looks like. And now, I don't know if Jesus was particularly a constant, you know, party goer. I don't know if that's the case. To where these servants already now knew him, you know. But the Bible says something very interesting, even at the end of that, which we'll get into shortly after. But what it points to us, which is actually in the end here, it says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. So it means that never before, because you know, when we teach, we, we, we make it clear because it is the fact, right? That the Bible only captured a few things. The Bible only captures a few things. It can't capture everything that happened during that time. It's, it's just a book of 66 books. So maybe it might be something where you're thinking, oh, could it be that because Jesus had a reputation and all of that? No, the Bible says here, it says the beginning of miracles did Jesus. So that is that these servants, maybe they were even like, you know how we have these events and you have like ushers and like they go from one event to another. So maybe they had stumbled upon him at another event. That's not the case. That's not the case. So this wasn't because they knew that, oh, this man actually knows what he's doing. This was simply because an instruction came. The mother had already told them and said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That's the instruction that's already come to us from God. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And then there were, you know, six water pots of stone after the manner of, uh, you know, the profan of the Jews. Okay. The point is that Jesus then told them, fill the water pots with water. Now, I cannot imagine the look on these disciples, uh, or rather the servants' faces, because these were not even his disciples. These were his servants. I cannot imagine the look on their faces. But you know what? I'm pretty sure that they were not yet as confused at this point. Because it's like, maybe he has some sort of thing that he's going to mix in here. Maybe this man is a herbalist. And like, he knows what kind of plants he will mix together in water. And then it will, <laughs> then it will turn to wine. But at that point in time, they had one, uh, one instruction. Which was, fill the pot. And they had already been told beforehand. Whatever he says to you, do it. And that is something that some of us need to take away from here in this teaching. Many of us have been handled by God in such a way where it's like we had been taken through like, you know, that toddler window. And it's like, you know, God had been using more of like a, I don't know how to explain it, a softer hand, you know, with you. <laughs> Not like God has a hard hand, right, on, on us, right? But I'm trying to find the best way to explain it. You know, when you are younger and you are newer in the faith... There's some room for some kinds of things that you have from God. It's almost as if God will sit down and start explaining and explaining and explaining. And I say, oh, okay, based on all these things that God has said, now I understand and all of that. But as you grow, as you as you advance, you will find that it's not so much that God is sitting down and explaining and explaining and explaining. What you receive <clears throat> becomes pretty much like what these servants were told. You're just giving an instruction. As opposed to before when this instruction will come with lots of encouragement. Don't worry, this, that, I will take this, I will do that. You get to a point with God where you're not, maybe you're not even getting all of that. But what you are getting is the instruction. And for some of us, this may be where we're going into. So we used to be in that season where it seemed as though, um, how can I, how can I describe this? Let me tell you, when we were much younger, yeah, the schools that I attended, right, they used to dictate our notes to us. They used to, they used to dictate our notes to us. I don't know, maybe we, I don't know what kind of schools. And I'm talking about like, like primary and all of that, right? So they used to dictate notes or write it on the board, yes. So they'd write it on the board and you simply write it out into your own exercise book. Or they'll dictate the notes and then you just take it. Now, as the Lord will have it, by the time I got into secondary school, um, and maybe your secondary school was different, but ours was not in the way that, you know, uh, maybe you experienced it. So what happened in a secondary school was I went there with my notes, right? Per usual, because, hey, they typically would dictate notes to us or they would write it on the board. And our own assignment is to just write off the board. And if God helps you, you find the time to read it, right? But I got into secondary school and turns out that the system was different there. What happened was that the teacher would come. <laughs> 
to the class and teach and teach and teach. And whatever the topic was, they would just teach, 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 teach. And it may be a one period class or a two period class. So you're just sitting down there listening. And I remember being shocked because I'm like, okay, at what point are they going to start dictating these notes? You know, I had all my pens. You know how we were in school? You'd have your blue pen, your red pencil that you can underline. Then you have this and that. Just, you know, nice fancy stuff and all of that. And so the teacher keeps teaching and I'm thinking, okay, time is going and this person is still talking and talking and all of that. And it so happened that the teaching finished and this teacher said, okay, so now um, you all, I want to uh, make sure that you have your notes um, by the time we come together for the next class because I'm going to check. So in my head, I'm thinking, what is this woman saying? <laughs> because you sat here or rather you stood here. You were supposed to give these notes and we were supposed to take them down. But you sat here and you talked throughout and you're telling us by and that you will check our notes how. And that was when uh, my eyes were opened and my understanding was fruitful um, in realizing that in this school, they do not give you notes. So I asked, I said, what, what does that mean? What's going on? Now, those who maybe had senior sisters, they were lucky. They were like, oh, you form your own notes. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you form your own notes. I said, no way absolutely no way because i sat down the whole time expecting that they would dictate and start saying and you'd be like i didn't hear that part and they'll repeat it again for you in this system you form your notes so i said what do you mean by that that means that one the teacher is not giving you notes two you're not supposed to replicate the textbook three the idea is that you understood enough of what was explained that when you go back home or when it's prep time because i was in the boarding school you can sit down pull out your textbooks you understand that okay these are the topics we've already covered and you form your notes on that topic so that was a shocker for me that was one of the first shockers for me that what you mean they're not giving people notes inside this place basically we had to form our notes so that's when I learned to do that. That's when I, I, I just, I was like, okay, I guess this is what we're doing here. So you would take your textbook and whatever the topics were, maybe we covered three chapters or whatever it was, you had to form your notes. So basically you had to read through what, you know, the textbook was saying on that topic and then start creating your own notes. So essentially one person's notes is going to be different from the next. Each person will have a different note from the next person. And I thought that was a very interesting system of teaching. But when I tell you that till I graduated from the school, it did not change. There were some classes here and there that they might, they might give you notes and whatnot. But for the most part, you had to form your notes. So if you sit down during the teaching and you decide to be absent-minded, good for you. But at the end of it, as far as that teacher is concerned, they have dealt with that topic and it's gone. If you formed your notes, you'd be ready for exam. If you did not, well, good luck to you. And part of the form order, actually, uh, is it form order we called it then? I don't know. But part of like the assessments, let me put it that way, was that they would actually take notes. Like you, the whole class would have to turn in your notes so that the teacher can mark it. So if you didn't form your notes, you already knew you had zero. If you formed bad notes, you ha your score showed for it. So you would see that there are people who would take their time. They would write the notes. They would put the diagrams in the middle, all of that, just so that they could get a good score. Now, why am I saying all of this? For some of us, you have come from that system where everything was fed to you, where you were told this, everything was laid out for you easy. So they stood in front of you, they dictated the notes, they waited till you wrote it down and you put the full stop where it belonged. They told you where to put comma and everything. That's the system where, where, where we came from. But we're moving into a new season. And this good wine that you are about to partake of means that you are moving into a season where you are going to need to learn to follow instructions. Instructions that may not make sense. Instructions that may not follow logic. Instructions that may not seem like you have the capacity to follow. Instructions that may seem like you are being asked to live on the edge. Instructions that may seem like you are being asked to live on the risky lane. Because that is exactly what these guys were faced with when they were told to fill pots with water when people were in a party. People were already high. People were already excited. People were already, you know, uh, festive. So how do you interrupt something of that nature and give people water? So, but they were asked to fill these pots with water and they were asked to take that water to the, uh, to the governor of the feast and then to the guests. I hope you understand that this did not make any kind of sense. Because let me tell you, at the point in time where you tell me to fill water into pots, I may not have a problem with it. Because maybe you went to, um, uh, I don't know, uh, 
some sort of school where you learn about herbs. So you know what to pluck and pound and grind and you will make wine out of it. I don't know. Maybe you know something like that. But at the point in time where instruction number two comes that says, take this wine and, or rather water and go give it to the governor. That's a whole different thing. Because the Bible notes it here. It says, but the servants which drew the water knew. So nobody else knew what was going on, but the servants which drew the water knew. And this may be what it's like for some of us, which is the reason why in this season, not only are you going to have to learn to develop that ability to just listen to and obey instructions, you are going to have to be guarded with who you want to be explaining what this season of your life is to. You will need to be very, very mindful. Because I am very sure that if these guys would have on their way said, hey guys, hey, do you know that this thing that we're carrying is water? Hey, be praying for us, so be praying for us. And you see, that's how some of us are. That's how some of us are. So it's in the guise of, ah, keep me in prayers. Send me, you know, keep. Meanwhile, you have an instruction. Take this water straight there. So you are going to be receiving instructions in this season and it's not going to come in the typical manner that you are used to where it's almost like you are babied. That's the best term I can use to describe it. You are babied. It's given to you in a soft form so that you can take it, so that you can manage it, so that you don't feel overwhelmed. But in this season, instructions that will look crazy, instructions that will look like complete opposite of anything that makes sense will come to you. It is your ability to follow the instruction that are determined if you can indeed partake of the good wine. And so I don't know what that instruction might look like. I don't know what area of your life that instruction may come for you. But your ability to follow instructions will make a difference. It will make or break your ability to partake of the new wine. I hope somebody is listening to me. I hope somebody is following me. Because there's, there are people here that this is exactly what will happen to you. There's the form your instructions used to come in before. There's a way you used to receive it where it will come with plenty, elaborate stuff. I'm telling you now that this shift that is happening, <laughs> that is bringing this good wine, you may not receive your instructions in this nice, gentle, soft, you know, package like it used to be. So a couple of days ago, maybe three, I went to God. Listen, I now see why people say, well, don't question God. Because I sat down there asking this question because I was just like, you know, I'm a human being, okay? So I'm like, this is Sean. Aye, why now? Why, Lord? So I said, let me ask. And I was just exasperated. I had a few things that happened around that I just felt like, you know what? I have to, I, ha I need answers. I need answers. So there I was. <laughs> and I sat down before God and I was asking, and I'm going to be honest right now, okay? I wasn't asking in the like soft test, like, oh, no. I was very like, I need to know. <laughs> Oh my God. Now I understand when Job was gathered that, come here, let me see who you are. That is you want to talk. Okay, meet me. Since you can match me, come out, Job. I can understand now. <laughs> when Job was someone that, come out now, since you are a man, come. Because maybe you will explain to me how the foundations of the earth were from, where the pillars that are holding the world, you know. I'm now, I was like, oh, okay. Because I went there like, I must know, I must this, I must that. And then it so happened that, oh, I received an answer. And when I received that answer, you see, you know how Job was, I'm listening, the Bible is there for us to learn. You know how Job was nicely gathered that he, he didn't even have anything else to ask again. That God said, okay, since you have been calling me to court, since you have been uh, querying me, eh, this query, I've been receiving query, query, query on my day. Okay, come then. You want us to, let's, let's match then. Because it's like you have some answers that me, I don't have. You know what I don't know. So where were you when I drew the measurement of, of this? Where were you when, you know, the foundation? Do you even understand the instructions by which? And then Job had to be quiet. Listen, I'm just saying that I had a bit of a moment. Because <laughs> I went there like that, like, I must know. I need the answers of this and that. And... I just messed, you know, I even forgot that I, I partook in such a, a silly, uh, uh, you know, adventure. I forgot that I did that too. So when I went to sleep, I was not even ready <laughs> for what came at me. Hi. 
Because the answer I received, when, I, when, it, when they tell you that the answer was loud, believe me. Even me too, I, 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 I came out like Job. You know how Job was gathered? <laughs> ah, he was gentle. Yes, after that, that's how I was gentle. I said, oh, and I understood something <laughs> in practical terms. Because the only answer that I was giving was only the will of God prevails. And it wasn't even told to me in a gentle way. So I'm just giving it to you in a gentle package. But that wasn't the way that the answer came to me. But when I received that answer, I said, my goodness. I, I said, yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I was humble. And I want to say that to someone here today. Because it is very possible that this season that you have been in, leading you into this new uh, wine, this good wine that's about to be poured out. Maybe you have been going through some things. Maybe you have been dealing with some things. Maybe you have been like that person whose wine ran out in the midst of their event, whose wine just finished right in the middle of what you were doing. The unexpected happened to you. What you didn't plan for came your way. I'm going to give you the same word. I was given because you're probably sitting around asking so many questions. You are sitting around checking with God. Oh, did God not care? Does God not see? Did God not know? Did God, were you not there? Why did you allow him? And last, last, <laughs> what God is telling you is this, that only the will of God prevails. So you might look at what led you to this situation where you are now having to, to, to walk along these lines of risk where you are having to literally hold your life in your hands as you are carrying a cup of water to somebody who is expecting wine from you. You are in that space and you are wondering, why did this happen? Why did God allow this happen? Why did this? Why did this? And the answer to you is this, is that only the will of God prevails. So regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what you think to be the cause of it, regardless of what you think is the reason why, oh, maybe it's because somebody didn't do this. Oh, maybe because uh, this didn't happen. Maybe if, 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 oh, you have so much going on in your head and I'm going to give you an answer to shut everything off so that you can just focus on the instruction that you have that is supposed to lead you forward. Because this whole thing that you are doing is keeping you circling back. It's keeping you focused on the past. It's keeping you focused on what's behind. But this answer was sufficient to shut every question up for me. And that is the same answer I'm giving to you. Only the will of God prevails. You may not like it. You may not think it's, it's, it's following your own plan. But I'm telling you that in the long run, you will be thankful for the fact that only the will of God prevails in your life. And sometimes it doesn't look like it. For example, when Jesus was crucified, it did not look like that. But was it or was it not his will? So I'm speaking to somebody now who this year has not played out quite the way that you thought it would. There were things that happened in the year that made you question, did God really say this? Did I really receive that? Did this really this? And did this really that? Only the will of God prevails. But what's going to be important for you is to learn to follow instructions. So if God is telling you in this season, if God is speaking to you and beckoning on your heart and telling you, you know what, come out of that place where you are right now. That is exactly where you need to be. Outside of that place. If God is telling you, move into this place instead, that is exactly where you need to be. That is the instruction. If you will partake of the good wine, you must be somebody who can follow instructions. If you are the kind that wants to sit down and keep asking, oh, I must have this and I must have that, you might be sitting and waiting a long time. So I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 26 for us. I'll read a few verses and it may be on this note that we pray. The Bible says here from verse 1, it says, And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. There's a lot more there. We are familiar with that, you know, blessings and all of that. But I want to point out something here. This is God speaking to Isaac about something that he has not even yet done. Because at this point in time, Isaac went on to Abimelech, uh, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. But God knows our frame. He knows how we are. And you see, part of why this thing is important is because for Isaac, 
He had an antecedent. He had a path. He had a pattern that he was supposed to follow. Okay, when this thing happened, my father simply went straight to, to Egypt. So this must be the way that this works. This must be the way that this whole thing plays out. Because when it was my father's turn, that's what he did. But God already knew the way his heart was positioned. God already knew the way that he was already thinking. And so he went to him. He said, the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down into Egypt. Because it's possible for you to be looking at where God is, is having you stay. And it is indeed descriptive of what looks like a famine. It says there was a famine in the land. So you might look at it and because you are a strategic thinker, because you are a master planner, you're like, oh, okay, this is what I must do now. This is where I must go. One day, we will be able to speak in plain terms so that you understand. It says there was famine in the land, but God told him, he said, sojourn in this land and I will be with you. Because your greener pastures is not where it looks lush. Your greener pastures is where God is. Your greener pastures is where God is. Your greener pastures is not where it looks like they're having a blast. Your greener pastures is the instruction that God gives you. So you might be looking at some other people and thinking, oh, this, you know, people have it really well. Oh, this, this, is, I, this is where I have to go. Your greener pastures is exactly where God has asked you to stay. I'm wondering if this person is here on the call. But there's somebody, one of us here that God showed me a couple of days ago. And I was just like, hey, I don't know how to explain this one to this person. But I will say it. I will just, you know, give that word here. Okay. There's one of us here who has been, you know, I guess you've been honestly sitting there. I mean, who's not going to think of their finances? And you have been considering one investment. I don't know in what field or what form or what, fa what fashion it is or whatnot. There's an investment that you have been considering. And when you look at other people who have made that investment, it is enough reason for you to put your money in there. It's one of those kind of things where it's like it almost looks too good to be true. That kind of thing where they are telling, oh, if you just bring this kind of amount after this window, you will get this and that. So you've had some time, you've been pondering about this thing and you've made a decision in your heart that you are going to invest there. And this is just the instruction that I want to give you. I'm telling you right now that where God is leading you, it's not where it seems like the, everybody else is making a killing. Oh, everybody, you know, that's not where it is. That's not where it is. That's not where it is. I don't know who this person is. It was one person and it was a lady. That's why I didn't feel the need to share this on the, um, the general uh, prayers that we had even with the, with the tribe. It was a lady. It was a lady. Mm, and I feel that the confirmation just uh, dropped. So you have been considering something. There's that investment. You are hearing about other people. They are putting their money in it. They've been, they, everybody has been putting their money in it. And this person is in Nigeria. So everybody else has been putting their money in it. So you are thinking, oh, this must be it. It's one of those things that indeed, it sounds almost too good to be true. I'm telling you that you are right. It is in fact too good to be true. That is not where God is sending you. That is not where God is sending you. Everybody else might be there, you know, making all of that money. That is not where God is asking you to invest. I'm just delivering a message. So you know where you are. You know what you've been considering. You know the kind of moves you, you are about to make just because you're, you're kind of in a tight corner. You're a little desperate and you feel like everybody else is making a killing. Why am I sitting here staring? Why am I here looking? I'm telling you right now that that is not in fact the land that God is directing you to. Because like Isaac, he had a very different instruction. Yes, Egypt is looking like it's popping. Egypt is looking like it's nice and dandy and, and all of that. As a matter of fact, my father even went to Egypt too when it was his turn. But the instruction is sojourn in this land. Because your green pastures is not where everybody is going. Your green pastures is not where it looks like, wow, this thing is so green. If I don't get my share of it, you know, what am I doing here? Your, your green pastures is exactly where the instruction of God is for you. So what is God asking you to do? What is God telling you? What is that instruction that you have received that you have not been willing to accept because it doesn't make logical sense? That is exactly where your green pastures is. So the word for you today is this, 
How willing are you to listen to instructions? How willing are you to obey? Even the instruction that, that does not look like it makes sense. I'm telling you that this thing might seem simple, but do you understand how much you have to overcome yourself to obey and, and um, uh, follow certain instructions? Everything about you is telling you this is pure foolishness. Nobody does it this way. The experts, everybody else before you is... Go and read their books. Everybody else before you is... If you even go and sit down with, uh, you know, your uh, gurus and whatnot, they will tell you exactly why you are foolish. And it will make sense. You will live there and actually believe that, yes, indeed, I, I must be a little foolish to want to do this. But if that is the instruction of God to you in this season, that's where you must be. That's where you must be. It may be a place that you are there with tears. It may be a place that you are there and, you know, you, you are feeling like, why am I the only one? If God tells you that that's where you're supposed to be, that's where you should be. And the Bible records in verse 12, after this instruction comes to Isaac to stay in that place, don't go to Egypt. They have plenty of cucumbers, of onions, of this, of that. They have it all. But do not go there. Do not go there. So there's somebody that this word is for you. Because there's a quiet instruction brewing in your heart. But there's this other loud voice of what every other person is doing. And it seems like this is the best place to put your money. Please don't put your money there. Do not put your money there. So the Bible says in verse 12, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. Hey, listen, one thing I've learned in my walk with God is that even if I have to cry when the instructions come, I have no desire to be anywhere else but in that instruction. It may not always be palatable, but do you think that God doesn't know what he's doing? Is there a system that someone can put together in this world that can confound God? Is there something God has decided that he will give you that then he's now restricted, he's now limited, he's now blocked because, oh, the wise men of this world, the owners of industry, they've gated him out. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. Because as long as the word of the Lord is what is leading you to that place, you can be assured that you will receive a hundredfold there. The Bible says he sowed in that land and received in the same year. And that is something I want you to please take note of. Because part of what Satan might try to convince people about that will cause them to be desperate enough to follow something else other than what God is telling them to do is that, my dear, can you not see other people that are... Do you know how long it took for them? Listen, I promise you that your timeline is not the same with everybody else's own. God has a much different system for you, a much different timeline. So don't look at somebody else and be like, oh, it took them 10 years. It took them five years. If God tells you that that is where he has reserved your portion for you, if God tells you that is where you will partake of the good one, that is exactly where you will. And in the time frame that he said. So the Bible says that he sowed in that land and received in the same year. Don't let Satan scare you. Don't let Satan convince you that you are going to the back of the line. Oh, it is God who is able to pick somebody who is behind, who has no business in things that are being decided, things that matter. It is God who picks people like David from the backside. Someone who is not even counted you know, worthy amongst his brethren. Who picks a person like that and throws them to the front. So I'm telling you right now that even as this word is here for you, telling you that you are going to partake of the good wine, I'm telling you that there are instructions that you may be receiving in this season. You may not receive them in, 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 in a way that is easily understandable. You may not receive them in a way that, that makes you feel comfortable. You may not receive them in a way that makes you leave the presence of God, you know, skipping for joy like, oh yes. No, 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 no. no. It may not come that way. But if it's the instruction of the Lord, then it is true and it will be fulfilled. Because Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. That is all you need to know. 
The Bible says, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Listen, when I'm telling you that this is a shift for somebody, I mean it. Hitherto, you have been playing in a certain uh, level. You have been playing in a certain space. You have been playing in a certain field. And now God is asking you to launch out into the deep. God is asking you to step into where it really matters. God is asking you to move into a different space. You can't see what is waiting for you. So you are so afraid. What you had here on this other side of, of, of things is so good. So what do you mean by leave it alone? You know how they say in Nigeria, some of us will have to ask God to help us. So because the way our minds are postured, you know how they say it, we die here. So you're like, lie, lie. I am not leaving this place. This thing that is so good, we die here. That's what some of us will tell God. Because indeed, we are willing to die there. That mm -mm, if it's not this, I don't want another thing. But God is telling you, there's something else I have for you. There's something else I have for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have, have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man. But there's a simple instruction. And that instruction may be come out of where you are. That instruction may be stay where you are. That instruction may be do not go into that place where other people are going. That instruction may be do not fight back. That instruction, it may just seem like it doesn't make sense. I can tell you I know the, the, the burden of having to stay with an instruction that you're like, the, everything in you is fighting. Some of us, maybe you are so good and you are so cultured and you are so, so if God just says, no matter how wild it is that God, what God says, you are just like, yes. Ah, some of us, the Lord is helping, is helping us because we're like, no, 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 no. This is not making sense. It doesn't matter what that instruction sounds like. My assignment here is to ensure that nobody misses out on the allocation of the word that has come to us for this month. So as the word of the Lord comes, there is an instruction. So the, the blessing was already captured. The blessing was already captured. It says, I will be with thee. I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. I, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto thy father Abraham. But what was the preceding thing? Sojourn in this land. Everything else was dependent on that. Everything else was dependent on that. Sojourn in this land. And then the rest of it follows. I will be with thee and this and that and all of that. But the instruction that preceded that was sojourn in this land. So what is that instruction that God is giving you that is hard for you to take? That is hard for you to bear? That sometimes might even bring tears to your eyes because you're like, why? Look at everybody else. Look at my mates. And you are telling me, wait. You are telling me, don't go. You are telling me this and that. If that is the instruction of God to you, then you stay there. I was listening to a man of God recently. I came across these short clips. Um, and as usual, the title was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And he was talking about something that happened in his life. He was talking about when <laughs> he had come to a certain season of his life, he had graduated. And some of you may know that man of God. He had graduated and it was time for everybody to go and, you know, do NYC and all of that. And, you know, he was ready to go because, I mean, he's been on fire for God. So left to him, he's about to have a job, have a nice life. And then, you know, ministry and all of that. And so the instruction comes and it's, I think for him and somebody else, and it came through somebody that, you know, he himself uh, had a lot of respect for. And I think he himself had been having like, you know, those little inklings of like, mm, could God be saying this? Could God be saying that? And the instruction was that as for you, you have not yet finished your time in this school. It's not time for you to go. And it was so painful for him. It was so painful for him. He said, you have to, you are staying here for two more years. You are staying here for, was it two more years or one more year? I don't recall. And it was a hard and painful instruction for him. Because imagine looking at everybody else leaving. You all came here together. It's not as if you failed. It's not as if you are not smart. And God says, you are not yet done here. You stay here two more years. And he did. And he did. And some days he would be crying. Some days he would be sad. Because he's thinking, he was saying, I'm not a lazy person. I'm smart. If I try to go out there, I know what I'm capable of. And God says, stay here. And it didn't look like it made sense at the time. And it brought a lot of pain to him. So, in fact, people talked about him. The very people that he, he discipled 
They even now started using him to, you know, preach with style. You know? But the instruction already came that said, stay here. And he did. And when the time came, the Lord released him from there. And I can tell you now that when you see certain people and you see the kinds of things that um, God is doing in their lives, you can tell that these are men who have gone through that window of painful instructions. Of painful instructions. So it's easy to stand and look at people and think that, oh, their own grass is green, this and all of that. Do you understand the path that some of these people have had to follow? Do you understand the path of pain that they had to just, just endure in that season? Instructions that were painful. And this guy said, he looked at himself. I am capable. I can do, in fact, and undo. But the instruction was clear. Stay here. Stay here. And you know what is interesting is this. is Those are the times that really test your obedience uh, quotient. They really test your ability to submit. Because it's a different thing if God forced your hand into it. Maybe he made sure that you failed all your courses so now you can't graduate. So it's like this. You can't go anywhere anyway. But it's a different thing when that's not the case. But you are told, stay. And you are holding this thing in your hand and knowing I can walk out of here at any point in time. I go and apply for something and I will get the job. And I will be okay. And But God told him, don't go. Watching his mates, watching those that he discipled, everybody was going and God told him, stay. A painful instruction, but he, he yielded to it. He heeded the instruction nonetheless. He, he heeded the instruction nonetheless. And at the appointed time, God began to exalt his horn. So you may not know the back end of people's stories. You just come and you just see that, oh, wow, look at this Isaac of a guy. Look how prosperous he is. Look how great he is. Eh? Can you imagine that? The back end is the instruction. The back end is the instruction. What is it that God is telling you to do that you're having a hard time yielding to? That you're having a hard time uh, obeying? I'm telling you right now that you need to go back to Jesus and say, God, help me. It's one of the things I do. I don't kid myself. If I know that this thing that God is asking for ah, is, is much, um, first of all, I'm going to ask that. Do you have another way? Do you have another prescription for this thing? I don't say that there's no prescription. My, my, my own is help. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I don't know what your instruction is. I don't know what is telling you. Oh, stay in this city. Don't get into that job. Don't begin that business. Oh, begin to invest in this. Open a business in this industry. What is that instruction? And you're thinking, what? My background is in this. If I begin in this place, I know it like the back of my hand. And God is telling you, go into this other place. Begin that. And you're thinking, what? To start all over again? No. To begin to learn something new? No. I'm already established in this place. I already know this thing. And God is telling you, move. 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 For some of the others of us, we are constantly on the move and God is telling you, sit still. Sit still. Sit still. And you're like, no, 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 no. I don't know how to be quiet. And God is saying, just sit still. Sit still. I don't know where you are. I don't know which category you fall into. But what I do know is that for those who are supposed to partake of this good wine, there's an instruction that God has attached to it. What is that instruction? Do you feel that, oh, I can't do this? Then you can ask God for grace because grace is always available. Grace is the resource by which kingdom uh, initiatives, kingdom agenda, kingdom plans are accomplished. So if you find yourself with a desire to be aligned with the kingdom, with a desire to pursue what God is asking you to do, you can be very certain that grace will be available. So that's going to be our prayer as we close the teaching for today. We're going to say, Father, will you help me? Will you teach me how to yield to instruction? There was a, a while ago that God gave me a strange instruction. I, when I woke up and I told them, and I said, I don't know what this means. Little did I know that indeed 
it was for a time coming very soon he told me something to do he says every month do this start putting this away i said this doesn't make sense he says start putting it away i was just like yeah yeah you know but gradually i was like you know what let me just start do, doing a little bit because this god we don't know how god used to see these things you know so if he said let me let me just obey because i'm like i can't shout was my obedience perfect? Not in the beginning, but at least I just said, let me just begin. Let me just try. So what is that instruction? Because there will come a time when you are supposed to begin to, to, to partake of the fruits. Where you are beginning to drink. We're supposed to begin to drink of that wine. And it will seem as though, oh, what, you know, is there some delay here? No, it's that there was an instruction that accompanied the season. And maybe you didn't yield to it. Maybe you did not follow it. So we're going to pray. You know, for some of us, this is an instruction that you have already heard. It's an instruction you discarded because you're like, uh, who? No. You and who will do this? You and who will do this? You already know that instruction. It's just a difficult one. But the beauty about grace is that it does not know difficult. It does not know difficult. All it knows is possible. Is it difficult? Maybe, maybe not. But it's not as important because what grace cares about is possible. And so it's possible. There's something God has for you. Listen, there's a, a major shift. Some of you, listen, you don't even understand where you're at. You're about to break records in your family. You're about to shift paradigms in your family. Listen, hey, some of you don't understand where you are. This is supposed to be. Let's come off mute and pray. Because maybe it will take God opening your eyes to see exactly what is in front of you so that you can then understand the need to follow this instruction. But some of you are about to shift the story. It's like, you know, when they were talking about the um, genealogy of Jesus. They were breaking it down and they were like, oh, this uh, 14 generations to this, this 14 generations to that. Or, yeah, I think it was uh, in, in 14s that they were counting it. And it was as if there were certain people that were markers of like, okay, at this point, okay, then this person. Some of you don't understand that in your lineage, in your family line, in your bloodline, what is about to happen for you is, 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 is supposed to take this form. Where it's as though when they are counting and they are grouping, you begin a new era. So they group it, they count it up until this season. Then they start counting from you downward. Because you are setting a new dispensation. You are setting a new era. You are breaking records. You are shifting things. You are putting your family on the map. You are bringing the name of your family to places where nobody thought that they would even know that you poor exist. And this is where it begins. This is where it begins. This is where it begins. Because the emergence of the new wine is a shift. The emergence of the new wine is a, is a, is a sharp change. There's nothing like, oh, this is, no, it, what was before it is gone. Because the Bible says that was the beginning. That was the beginning of a new thing in Jesus' ministry. So I want us to come off mute and pray. Because what is supposed to happen for you in this season is tied to a simple instruction. For Isaac, it was not more than that. Some of us are waiting for 10. It's one. Sojourn in this land. Sojourn in this land. That's it. So I want us to come off mute and pray. For those of us who are still asking God for help with clarity, maybe we are still yet to know what the instruction is. So I'm saying, Father, make it clear. I'm seeing A and then the next day I see B, then I sleep again, then I see A, then another person texts me and it's sounding like C. I don't know. You are going to ask God to clarify what that instruction is. And for those of us who have already heard that instruction and was telling ourselves, God forbid, I rebuke it. Satan, get it behind me. You know that that is God speaking. It's not Satan. You are going to open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, grant me grace, grant me strength. So God bless you to those who were on YouTube with us, but we're going to shift over to Tim's because now the meeting is over and we just want to pray. Those are two prayers. If you are needing clarity on what your instruction is in this season so that you can partake of this shift, you ask God for that clarity. You ask God to make it clear. And if you already know, if you're already, you know, you just have that sense that, ah, God is calling me to do this and you're already like, oh God, no, 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 no. 
you're going to open your mouth and you're going to ask God for grace because there's nothing God will ask you to do that you do not have the grace for. You just